almost 10 years of software engineering experience, relevant university degree, making videos on YouTube about data structures and algorithms, sometimes in the sand with a stick. You'd think I'm pretty good at lit code, right? But why can't you rely on university degree and work experience to be good at lead code? This is exactly the topic we're going to be covering in this video, but also why is it so frustratingly common? We're going to look at three key elements of each lead code question and maybe even figure out how can we get better. But like I said, I'm still struggling. So if you have good tips on how to become better at lead code, leave them in the comments. In my last video, the comments were better than the video itself. So I have some faith in the community. But before we look at something that we can do to make it better, how come university and work experience didn't help? My university was very theoretical. You learned a lot of stuff, but you didn't really learn how to put them all together and make something practical out of it. This was left for you to figure out after the university. So even though I had an understanding about some data structures, some algorithms, some things that are happening in the programming world, I didn't really have a way to apply this knowledge. I think you're a little bit better off if you're studying pure computer science, but it was not the case for me and it's not the case for a lot of people. So university didn't give me much for lead code, except maybe patience and spending time solving difficult problems, but that went away pretty quickly. If you miss my cat, he's always there. When I went on to get my first job, I was extremely lucky and so delusional to get it very quickly. So. I didn't have that long period of interviews that is very common nowadays, but for me, it was not a thing. I got my first job three weeks after I started learning Java. It's extremely delusional to even try. I think this whole story is pretty boring, but if for some reason you want to hear about it, let me know. I think my journey with Litco started when I was referred to Amazon by a friend. They had this online assessment step, which they still probably have, with some life coding questions. The interview was scheduled in a month, but the problem was I had no idea how to solve even the easiest one of them. And when I opened some preparation materials, I was just staring at a problem, having no idea what to do with it. Also, it was in a period when I had to fly between the Europe and the US every two months. And I have to say, I was extremely jet lagged. So, I started preparing. Based on this limited knowledge that I had, I knew that just solving thousands of problems will not get me anywhere, plus I didn't have time to solve that amount of problems. So I started looking for some patterns. Of course, I didn't do it on my own, I googled it. It was in the before AI times. I made a list of algorithms that I thought I should know, from sliding window and two pointers to more complex algorithms with graphs and other abstract data structures. But I have to say, for me personally, the hardest problems of them all are the problems with permutations. I cannot. And maybe spatial forms. And I have to say, I'm not a person with great discipline, so I don't know how, but I managed to get through the list and I managed to get through the online assessment and the phone call and whatever interviews they had. And at the same time, I got approached by the Google recruiter. It was a thing back then in 2019. I got two on-site interviews scheduled with Google and Amazon in two different countries with all expenses paid for traveling in a hotel. And I still think it was the best time of my life because I felt invincible. And then COVID happened. And unfortunately, all of my on-sites became online interviews and sitting through five hours of online interviews is a completely different experience than talking to a person for five hours. I really liked the format of whiteboarding interviews back then because it was a completely different format from coding and the expectations were completely different. So I have to say I failed both of them. What is the opposite of with flying colors? With burning hat and all of the gaps in my preparation, if you can call it that, were very evident during these interviews. I actually learned a lot from that. For starters, do not schedule both big companies at the same time. Do one, then learn, then do another one. But most importantly, I learned what was I missing in the online interviews, what were my weak points, and I could somehow mitigate them to get my current job. And it sounds like a success story, right? But the problem is, as soon as I got my current job, I forgot everything. Even though I was actively involved in some projects that were working with graphs, so I had to apply these complex algorithms on my daily basis and my job, I still forgot everything. And now I open lit code or any other platform and I don't even know what I'm doing. So I had to sit down and think, why? I'm a good engineer. 
I like data structures and algorithms. In fact, I understand the value of live coding interviews. I also have a video about that. You can check it out. It's actually my first video on this channel. And yet it just doesn't work. I think the main reason for me is that it's too abstract. When I deal with business problems, I understand that somebody in the world needs a solution for it. And I know what they want. I can provide the results in some way. I just need to figure out the implementation, the path to these results. With Lithka, nobody needs an answer. The path, the, the, the journey is kind of the desired outcome. And I'm not that zen to accept that. Also, when I'm solving the problems at work, I usually take my time to understand the problem, talk to stakeholders or whoever sent me the problem. Very often, if it's a big problem, I try to understand it. And then I go home, I sleep, I do something else. And next morning I have the full understanding of the problem in my head for free. And with LitCode, you're supposed to do it in a very limited time and alone, or even worse, under a supervision of somebody. And another problem that maybe it's just my personal problem, but is that I work in multiple languages. And as you know, a lot of the things that we use in lead code and coding problems are not exactly the same that you do in your normal day-to-day -day work. For example, when I write in Kotlin, I almost never have to use the for loop. However, weird that might sound, but it's the most basic thing for a coding problem. And it's not such a big problem when you have one language, but when you work with multiple languages at the same time, you have to remember both ways of writing the code, the business-oriented code and the lit code style code. So that made me really frustrated and I didn't know how to approach the problem in a more structured way. So I looked at the lit code question itself. If you think about how you solve the problem, you will notice a very clear structure. For myself, I identified three parts of solving a problem. The first part is to understand what they want from you. What is the goal? What is the outcome? What is the desired modification of the input data so you can get your output data? And I struggle with this part quite a lot because it's always written in some kind of math adjacent language and you're trying to figure out what is going on and where. And I understand that a lot of the words in the life coding task are important because they are talking about the constraints and restrictions that you have, but it's still tough. I'm used to hearing normal human language. At work, you usually don't get that many constraints and clarity, but also everything is communicated in a normal human way. So once you understood the goals, you need to figure out the solution. And this is the second part. And this is my favorite part. I approach this part as a mechanic with the set of tools. I pick up all of the data structures and algorithms that I know. And I think, does it apply to this problem? Or maybe should I use something else? Or maybe there is a more efficient way. This is a fun part because it feels like a puzzle. You're trying to put the tools in the right places and see if it fits. But the third part is the one that frustrates me the most probably. And it's weird to say because it's the coding part, the actual implementation part. You know, the part that I'm supposed to be good at, but I'm not. Because of everything that we talked about before, this part feels like a char with a lot of pressure. I suddenly forget how to write in the programming language I've been using for the last 10 years. I forget edge cases that I just mentioned in the solution part and everything just becomes a mess. And this is the part that I'm still trying to figure out how to solve it better. Because for the first part, the solution is kind of simple, maybe not easy to implement, but simple. You do it with friends or you do it with the community. There are multiple communities online that are solving coding tasks together. I do find them a little bit intimidating because they kind of expect you to know how to solve something. So there is a lot of judgment. But if anybody wants to find a judgment-free study group, maybe we can find each other in the comments and try it out here. So far, you guys are extremely supportive and I think it might be a good vibe. And the second part is also kind of easily solvable. You do have to invest some time into learning data structures and algorithms, but once you have a somewhat understanding of them, it's pretty easy to find the exact data structure that you need. But the coding part, the only things that I can think of is to do it regularly enough, maybe to stick to one language. That would have been a good tip for myself. And make sure that you have enough muscle memory to code any algorithm that you're thinking about, because it's not 
enough to know the theory, you also need to know how to apply it. So that was it for today. In my next video, I'm going to try to solve a lead code problem just for the fun of it, I guess. Also, making videos is a good motivation to practice. In the meantime, check out my videos about graphs or stacks and cubes or trees, where I'm trying to explain these data structures for humans in a human language instead of just pouring math at you. And by the way, the stick in the sand was not a joke. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.